Hey everyone, welcome to my new video. Today I want to do a smaller scale version of this which is layer scene. So right now I'll try to recreate some of the assets and capture the atmosphere and lighting of the scene. So, and if you're new to the channel and if you like to see these kind of tutorials in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell button to get notified when I release something new. So let's get to empty blender scene and start modeling. I'll begin by adding a plane and scaling it up four times. So let's now switch to the edge select by pressing two, select the opposite edges. Let's press E, Z, and then something like six will be enough, I think. Let's hit enter, select all. Now let's go to the face select by pressing three. Let's press Alt E, extrude faces and all normals. Press S to scale evenly and 0.3 for thickness minus to go in the opposite direction and let's press enter so this is basic stuff i did this uh, for all of my room tutorials so we can move along and now let's select the stop face so press 3 select the face press shift d duplicate enter and let's press p to separate confirm tab out and select the new face that we just duplicated and right now i want to create blanks from this so Tab in, and now let's slice this up a few times, something like this. Basically depends on what size of the planks do you want here. So yes, yeah, something like this could work. Let's confirm this. Now I can delete these other ones, I don't need them really. So press X, delete faces. And now let's extrude this one, chop it up a few times. And let's do some details. So press 1 for vertex select, click the vertex, control B and then V to enable vertex select or you can press control shift B, whatever you like. I find this a little bit easier to do. And let's do the same thing here, but with the edge selected. So press 2, select the edge, control B, make the bevel and now select the vertex. Press G twice to slide this and something similar here and we can slide this one as well and maybe we can go to the top view, press K to enable knife, do a nice diagonal cut here, press Z to enable cut through, enter. Now we can press 2 to edge select, select this one here, bevel this. But add one more segment, so move with the mouse wheel. And now let's slide this one here and we can push this down to create this kind of cut in the plank. Okay, I really like it so far, but now we can go to the local view and do something on the bottom side as well. So we can later have some variation there. So do something similar here and maybe some cutout there, control T to triangulate. And this should be enough probably. Maybe let's move this here. Okay, I think I like this, we can exit local view, that was a slash on the numpad. And now let's right click the plank, set origin to the center of mass. And now we can create link duplicate, so click the plank, Alt D but don't confirm, press Y then 1 to move this 1 meter, enter. And before you do anything, press Shift R as many times as you want. And now let's create some variations, so select some of these, let's switch to the individual origins. So hold period and switch to individual origins, R, Z, 180. And now we can scale some of these. So select this one, scale X minus one, and we can choose these two, press R, Y, 180, 
and we can scale some of these on the x so s x minus 1 s y minus 1 so basically you're just doing all of these uh, scale to minus 1 or rotation 180 degrees to really give this um, some variation so it doesn't look the same Okay, I really like the result, so we can move on and make some brick wall. First of all, let's select the original room object, go into the edit mode and let's duplicate this face, so Shift T, Enter P to separate. And now we can select that new object, go into the edit mode and let's slice this up vertically, something like this, maybe even less. Yeah, five cuts will be will be fine and now let's delete these we don't need them and actually we don't need this one as well so let's slice this up a few times and after the slicing we can press ctrl b and we just one segment do a bevel here press x delete faces and now let's make some room on the side here as well so press G twice and here as well so this will be our bricks basically so right now we can just select all extrude a little bit and now let's just do some variations so you can bevel those corners Okay, that's fine, so let's exit the local view, but to finish this we'll need to press Shift D in the edit mode, Z and move this up, and now I want you to press G and move this so we have that nice brick overlap there. And now let's just make a cut here, so K, Z and C to make this perpendicular enter and we can just delete these vertices go to the wireframe view so we get all of them press x delete vertices we can just close this and now if you want you can just press l over this shift dx and duplicate it on the other side select these vertices make some small adjustments and optionally make some beveling there as well but now we don't want this to look the same so we'll do one small adjustment and if you go to the wireframe view we can select all of these and just press R Y and 180 but we left our individual origins enabled so let's switch back to median point R Y 180 let's move this to place and this will be the base for our brick wall so now we can add some array modifier but let's disable a relative offset and we'll use constant offset because we want some space in there um, and i think it'll be something like 2.1 that looks fine but we'll need to scale this down a little bit so we can press s z and scale this just on a z axis we can check from the front so we have some space there at the top as well okay and right now we can all duplicate this whole object all d enter r z and 90 degrees and since the origin point was here in the middle it lands nicely on the wall there so that's about the room design and now we can create some props let's now create a fireplace with a cauldron here First of all, we need to select all of these planks and we can save them for later um, if we want to change something. So you can just press Shift D and then M to move to a new collection. Let's call this backup. 
and I do this quite often if I want to save something in some state and now let's select them again and press ctrl J to join them into a single mesh and now let's move a cursor here so shift right click shift A and add a cylinder there and now we can change the resolution to something like 24 and let's scale this up a little bit look from the side by pressing 1 and bring this up so it goes almost down here and now with the cylinder selected select the planks and you should have the bull tools add-on enabled to be able to do this so go into the preferences enable bull tools and now press just ctrl minus so we can create a hole there and now let's select the cylinder object once again the room object and ctrl minus too so we cut into that as well and what's great about this we can now select this object and scale it and move it around however we want so um, that's quite useful and now shift s to snap cursor to a new location so cursor to select it it's a little bit up there but important is the center of the circle here and now let's create a new cube scale it down like this scale on the x as well look from the front and move it to the side here like this you can look from the front by pressing one and move this down and now we can duplicate this with similar techniques that we did with the planks so let's switch to the cursor for the pivot point here so hold preview switch to 3d cursor press alt d r z 30 degrees enter and shift r to repeat this operation to create a nice cozy fireplace and now since they're all linked we can just edit the one and create some bevels there so control b then v Press G twice to slide. And now again we can switch to the individual origins, select just some of them, press S, Z to scale minus one on a Z axis, then repeat for these scale on the Y, but press it twice to scale on the local axis minus one. S, X twice to scale on the local axis minus one. So we get some nice variation there as well. So this is our fireplace. Now we can create some logs. So let's press Shift A. Add the cylinder there. Um, 12 should be enough. I'm going to the edit mode, scale this down and scale this on a Z axis. Now create some cuts with Control R, scale down. Now let's just select some vertices, switch back to the median point, enable proportional editing with random fall off and just move this a little bit around so it's not so uniform. Maybe add some cut with knife, press Z for a cut through. So we get some variation there as well. Okay, I think this will do, so let's exit local view right now. We can rotate this, move it down, Alt-D, and rotate, and place some, some logs here and there. Okay, something like this should do. Um, the most of it won't be visible at all, um, basically. So 
Now with the cursor still in the original place, we can create the cauldron. So add mesh circle. Now let's create, I don't know, maybe 16 segments will be fine. Press F. Go into the aid mode by pressing tab. Fill this with F. Now let's press E to extrude. Let's make two cuts, so control R, make cuts there, right click, and let's scale this up, but switch off proportional editing. Now select the top face and make it, and bring it a little bit higher. Now we can extrude, extrude once again, make this larger. And now let's just delete this top face, so X and faces. Now we can go ahead and add the solidify modifier, add some thickness to it. And now to make it look a little bit more old, um, first of all, I don't like the shape, so let's select all S, Z and scale this down. And the second thing we can do is enable proportional editing again, so press O, but leave the smooth fall off on, press G, Z and move this up maybe on the other side as well to create um, this kind of distortion there so it's a little bit cartoony and here you can see how I do everything a little bit bulky and chunky and that's um, to achieve that cartoon look so the planks are really thick the cauldron uh, should be really thick as well and with these types of distortions you can really achieve that nice cartoon look and in combination with the low poly style this gives uh, very good results so let's go ahead and make some final adjustments here by clicking the vertex there press v to rip the region and move it somewhere and move it away and now disable proportional editing and let's edit this and one on the other side as well maybe so somewhere here I guess so press V and then adjust this and maybe a little bit here so yeah that's for the cauldron and now we can just go into the edit mode and let's select this ring right here press shift D enter p to separate select the new object go into the edit mode press a scale on the z to zero so sz zero move it down a little bit press f now remove the solidify modifier from that new object and you can scale this so it touches the cauldron there so there will be some nice soup brewing in there and we can add some finishing touches by moving the cursor here so shift right click there shift a and add a round cube if you can't find a round cube you need to enable extra objects add-on in the preferences now add a round cube and i think the segments are all right here yeah the four will be fine for divisions so tab into the edit mode make this smaller now we can go to the wireframe view, hold Z, go to the left and we can delete the bottom ones, we don't need them. So we have created a nice bubble there and we can now press Alt D, Shift Z to lock on the plane, scale it down and move into place and here as well. So we have some nice bubbles. Okay, so that's for the stylus cauldron and now we can create a chest there with some skull and a and torch light on the wall. So shift right click here, shift A, add a plane, scale this on the x-axis a little bit to fill up the space and extrude. Now we can do two cuts, so control R, mouse wheel, and bring this up a little bit. So this is a base for the chest. And now we can do one more cut here, so control R, S, Z, 0, move this up, so G, Z. Now we can press Control B, Alt E to bring this inside a little bit, S for 
even scaling. Let's do two more cuts there so we can make some variation. But before we do, let's press Ctrl B to bevel this. Scale on the X a little bit more. And now just Shift T and P to separate. And let's stay with the chest. And now we can press Ctrl X to delete those and do two more cuts again right there so we saved uh, this for later and now we can continue with the chest object so again we'll do some bevels Okay, I feel like this should do, so let's now select these stripes there. And first of all, we can go local view, and we won't need this in the back at all. So we can just delete them. X delete faces, and we won't need this at all. So yeah, um, now select these edges, we can exit local view and just extrude this down. So only this part will be visible. Um, if you plan to use this asset in some other way where it, where it could be visible from more sides, of course you won't be deleting these faces, but I um, don't want to have any extra geometry right here. Um, so yeah, select all, Alt E and extrude along normals. Okay, so um, that's for the chest object. And now let's create the torch. So shift right click here on the wall, shift A and add a single word. And again, this should be available if you enable extra objects add on and make sure you have vertex select active, press E and extrude this on the X axis. Look from the top and we can just press E and extrude some torch holder here something like that, nothing too crazy. And now add a skin modifier, go into the edit mode, select all by pressing A and Control A to scale the radius of the skin modifier, so something like this. And now we can look from the top again, select only these vertices, Shift S, cursor to select it, tab out of the object and now press Shift A, add circle and only 12 sides will be enough. Go into the edit mode, scale this down to match the holder shape, look from the side and now just extrude this. And you don't have to go straight here. So something like this and let's close this up. So press F at the end. Now select the top one, press E, Z again and let's make this wide here like that and now add the solidify modifier here as well and increase thickness now for the flame um, we can add an icosphere so shift a mesh icosphere and let's just go into the aid mode scale this down exit aid mode move this up Now, again, in the edit mode, let's switch the proportional editing, vertex select and bring this out a little bit, make the radius smaller with mouse wheel, something like this. And now we can switch this to random fall off, select one of these vertices and drag it out. Like this. So this way you can create a nice kind of uh, low poly flame maybe make some additional adjustments and rotate it to find the angle you like. Maybe make it smaller, move it down a little bit. So this will be our low poly flame, low poly torch flame. And we can parent all of these to this object. So 
let's shift click all of these with the holder as last and control p and object keep transform now we can scale this up as much as we want and move it in place so yeah i feel like this is too large for the scale of the torch so go to the wireframe view and maybe reduce this a little bit Don't forget to switch off proportional editing. And I think we are done here with the torch. So now we'll create a skull. So let's press Shift S cursor to world origin. Now we can create a cube. Go to the local view by pressing slash on the numpad. Go into edit mode. And let's subdivide. And once again, maybe. And now let's just approximately create some shape that resembles a skull. So press 3 to look from the side, switch off proportional editing, go to the wireframe view, and we can select this bottom two rows of vertices and press Ctrl Alt Shift S and then Y to skew this. And I know it's a handful for a shortcut, but I really like this one. And now we can select these vertices and move them even higher. So we have this nice little shape there. Okay, like that. Now look from the front and we can scale this on X axis. Okay, and now to create eye sockets, just select this, make an inset, select the other one. Don't worry about the size and we are creating stylized call anyway, so doesn't have to look realistic or anything like that okay so this will be enough i think now let's cut some teeth in so let's go to edge select by pressing 2 select this edge and bevel that x faces and now just fill that cut out but first i want to cut some more so select this edge Control b bevel that and this well and this one as well and now delete these faces i forgot about these so let me fix that and now just with the edge select select this edge press f twice here as well here as well and we can move these faces by pressing g twice and do some variation there as well Okay, now we can select all and go here and find to sphere and just click and drag to make this more spherical. Now we can go to the face select, modify these eye sockets and then with vertex select, we can maybe drag this down a little bit. Okay, and now just extrude this on the Y side. And I think this will do for a stylized skull. Maybe you can play with the sphere tool uh, a little bit more and then just go around and make some, some adjustments as you wish. And in the end, you can always make some bevels. and some cuts here and there. Now exit the local view and obviously we'll need to make this uh, much more smaller and you can place it on the chest there. So move it somewhere here. Something like this. Yeah, so um, Let's press Shift A, create plane, go to the local view, scale this on the Y axis. We can now just select the vertex, press Ctrl B, then V to make bevel, increase number of segments. Now just click this one, enable proportional editing, press G, then X, 
and move this like that and we can move this a little bit here okay select all move on the x-axis and now let's tab out and I just press shift a create a cylinder and I think only eight sides will be enough let's tab in rotate on the y so r y 90 degrees let's make this smaller so scale it down select this select this face g x and move it out a little bit now do one cut here one more here alt click the loop there make it a little bit larger and now just select these two face and these two and scale them on the y and here you can just move this extrude scale it up and extrude once again extrude and scale down so you can play around with the shape and I want to add some volume to this so add solidify modifier to the blade apply and we can now join this so control J exit the local view and move it onto the chest so something like that okay now I think this should be larger a little bit and the flame should be larger definitely so let's focus on that for a while and I feel like we need to move this bottom where this is higher and scale this up okay much better in my opinion and now the cauldron looks too small so let's select all of these with the cauldron as last Control p and object keep transform and now we can scale the cauldron and we forgot to place it down a little bit so and now let's hide this for a while and let's select all of these stones with the boolean object as last and Control p and parent that so whenever we move this boolean object this will move as well and we can do the same thing for the logs there so parent them as well alt h to unhide and now we can parent the cauldron as well so whenever we move this it will move with the cutout as well okay now let's look from the camera view if we missed something so I have the isocam add-on here you can find the link in the description you just download the python file go to the preferences click install and load the python file there so let's create game isocam adjust the resolution a little bit here move the camera up and adjust the autographic scale to something like 16 okay and we can add the background there as well so scale it up and move down a little bit we can adjust from the side okay so this will be our composition and right now in the isometric view I can see the cauldron is still maybe too small so we can enlarge this move this up a little bit maybe we can parent these objects to the chest as well so we are able now to scale this as well and move this around so in the end just play with the scale of the objects because this is really um, too small of a scene and it's mostly like the cartoon representation of a room than a room itself So let's shift right click here, add a plane, tab in, press G then Y minus 1, scale on the X, 
now tab out and scale this down to create a shelf. We can apply the scale, extrude this down, do some cuts, maybe move this here, do a bevel, and some smaller vertex bevels as well. And move this more here. So right now I'm just looking for some nice composition here so it doesn't feel too filled up but not empty at the same time. And right now shift right click here on the shelf, create a new round cube. Now we can go into the edit mode. Let's look from the side, enable wireframe view, and we can select these, press S, Z and zero. And we can now maybe go to the edge select, select the ring around and bevel that. So control B and do a little bevel there. And now just insert this, extrude a little bit and if you don't have loop tools add-on enabled go into the preferences and enable that and then if you right click you should see the loop tools option here and you can click circle they'll do a circular shape here from your faces and now you can just extrude this let's delete the faces maybe make this larger a little bit that now just do a cut here bevel and make this larger okay and again we can add a solidify modifier here add some thickness to that now look from the side and move it up so it sits on that origin point now we can scale it around, move however we please. Um, but I forgot the cork there, so let's press period. Select this loop, shift S, cursor to select it, so we have a cursor there. Shift A, add a mesh. And yeah, let's add some cylinder. Just go into the edit mode, scale it down so it fits. Make it like this and select the top face and scale it up. So that's all to it and now we can join this maybe. Or rather don't because this has the solidify modifier so it's better to just parent this. And then if you do duplicates don't forget to press shift right bracket so you expand the selection. And now just alt D, shift Z and move this around. You can scale it in place and create some nice glass banks or something okay and we can maybe move one down here so so enable face select press g or rather press shift bracket to select this alt d and then hold control to snap this down there yeah i feel like this starting to look much better and I would say that this is basically complete when it comes to modeling so we can now move to creating some materials and lighting. Let's create some materials right now so let's switch to the material preview now select the planks go to the materials and add a new material let's call this wood now we can change the color something like that and now select the bricks or rather select the room let's call this wall and let's do a little bit of a yellowish tone there now select the bricks or rather stone and yeah, the same yellowish tone, but make it a little bit darker. Like 
that and we can go the wood here as well but let's duplicate this and create darker one and same for the chest now we can suck these rings and create the metal material just bring up the metallic here and a little bit of a brown stone and for the cauldron as well okay let's do the stone here and the wood for the logs as well but duplicate this and make it even darker and now switch the background let's create the background material and go all the way to the black now with the skull we just want to create a white material and create a new material slot and let's make this black and i want this pitch black so let's switch this to emission go to the edit mode select the bottom side of the eye sockets Control plus to expand the selection and click assign and now just switch this to black so we don't see any shading in there now just select the blade add the metal material and wooden material for the handle create a new slot and add the wood material there wood material for the shelf as well metal material here and as you can see i'm just creating the smallest amount of materials as I possibly can to keep the palette consistent. Yeah, um, let's add a wood cork. Let's add a wood material to cork. And now we can create a glass material, but I don't want to make this really a glass. So I will just make this a blue color with zero roughness so it's really reflective and make it darker so it just looks shiny and now for the cauldron content let's create green material switch to emission and let's give this nice green color that with some strength now we can enable some EV settings as well so if you go to the render settings you can enable occlusion bloom and some screen space reflections and within the screen space reflections you can enable refraction select the bubble let's call this bubble and first of all let's give it solidify modifier because it's open we can look at the thickness right here i think two will be enough but don't forget these two don't have the modifier so you have to select them select this one as last Control l and link the modifiers there so they get the solidify modifier as well this one not too much now just go back to the material preview, go to the materials and let's adjust this bubble material. So here down below, I want to switch the blend mode to alpha blend. And now set the transmission all the way and enable screen space refraction and just go with something like 0.1 now for the lights um we can switch this to the scene lights and scene world so we actually see what we have in the scene let's switch the cursor to the world origin and now we can create some main light that goes from the top so shift a light area light and bring this up a little bit just 100 watts or something like that to have this subtle lighting all around maybe we can switch this to disc 
and modify the color a little bit towards the blue tone. Now let's create the flame. So let's focus on that for a while. Go to the shading. Let's create a new material. Let's call this flame. And now I want you to add a texture, gradient texture. Map this with the converter color ramp. Connect this. You should be able to see something like that. And with the color ramp, change black to some yellow color or some orange, almost red color. And the end to some yellow. And now um, you'll need the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. So go into the preferences and enable Node Wrangler add-on. Press Ctrl T to enable mapping. And now we should be able to rotate this on Y axis to create a gradient we want. And now just move the handles here. Okay, something like this. And let's delete the principal BSDF and let's press Shift A shader and add emission shader connect it here and let's do something like 20 okay and if you want additionally you can play with the mapping here so it's not that straight and move it like that so there's a nice little difference some nice gradient and you can of course create more colors there go even darker So yeah, you can play around with the colors. Yeah, I think this will work fine for now. So let's switch back to the layout. And now we can press Shift S, cursor to select it and create a point light there. So we enforce that effect of the light a little bit more even. Move this behind the flame. And make it really strong with the orange color something like that and i really miss some blue color on the background there so let's just rotate here and create a point light really strong one maybe even more we can increase the radius and give it the blue color so we have some nice background there. Let's go with the 5000 or something so that it's really strong. And now we can go to the world settings. First of all, change the color of the world light to something more blue violet and bring up the power on that a little bit. Something like this. And we can add the principal volume here with the 0 0.01 density and some blue color as well to create a little bit of fog in our scene. Now let's now play with the light some more. So I think we should make this more blue and stronger. Maybe even more. And maybe add some more point lights there so sometimes in the scene you really don't have any reason to put light there other than that it looks good and if you have these places like some corners that are not visible from the angle of the camera you can hide the point light there and it will just create that nice gradient it will look good so that's something I always do it a little bit softer there okay and let's check the world settings again and one last thing we can do to make this look nicer is to go to the render settings color management and do 
really high contrast here and bring up the exposure. So maybe even something like two to really bring out that light. Maybe 1.8. So yeah, basically just play around with the lights, with the color of the lights, with their intensity, with their positions play around with the world settings, the colors too, and with the exposure and the contrast settings on, on this. And I would probably render this with Eevee because I really like um, the cartoon flat look it gives. So if we now go to the rendering and just render this out, I feel like this gives really nice cartoon result. So this is it for this illustration. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel and you like to see this kind of tutorials, hit that subscribe and that bell button so you get notified when I release something new. And thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.